imagine you're a 25-year-old young woman who has been forced to perform since as long as she can walk. She would love for new eyes to see her situation, but if she brings it up, she's constantly threatened that the conservators will take her kids away. There's a little conspiracy going around that Britney Spears is being held against her will. Maybe she is needing a conservatorship, and maybe her dad is helping, and these conspiracy theories are getting out of control. That idea that Britney is a puppet who just gets moved around and told what to do is incredibly inaccurate. It seems obvious that both Jamie and Lynn want her to get better. The conservatorship is in place to keep her healthy. Raising children, doing all these tours, doing all these concerts. Someone who needs conservatorship is mentally incapacitated and she has proven to do the opposite. People manipulate young women, they manipulate kids. It's dark and demonic energy that this industry was built on. Making anyone work against their will, taking all their possessions away, credit card, cash, phone, passport. The only similar thing to this is called sex trafficking. trafficking, trafficking. I had like certain people into my life that were that were just bad people. Like I was very guarded at first, but then I went to a point where I ended up letting them in because I was lonely or whatever the fact, and I really paid the consequences for that. Hello, thank you for coming today. I'm a little bit nervous, but also so very excited. <laughs> I don't even know where to really start, but I did want to just bring you on my channel and let you have a chance to introduce yourself to my subscribers and talk a little bit about the documentary that you and your team have been working on and just ask you a few questions. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited. Yay. Do you want to just give you an opportunity to introduce yourself like a, a short line or two and kind sure. of talk about you know what your perspective is and where you're coming from as a as a journalist sure so i worked in the mainstream media for two decades i started at the age of 17. i got my first news job working at fox news chicago when i was still in high school before i graduated college i was interning in the white house for the white house correspondent for the state department and over the course of two decades i worked for multiple newspapers and entertainment magazines covering all kinds of topics starting with hard news to politics to entertainment and including britney spears i did want to i guess just jump right in um there you do have a documentary coming out we're going to talk about the specifics the details in just a minute but it does pertain in large part to the free britney movement so i did want to just ask you what it was that interested you in the movement aspect of reporting on britney as a journalist um there's two things number one i decided to do this documentary the day that Britney testified for the first time on June 23rd. The moment I decided that I needed to tell her story was when I heard her compare her situation to sex trafficking. I have been exposing sex trafficking for several years now, and I'm also an advocate for survivors of sexual abuse. So when I heard her compare her situation to sex trafficking, that's when I knew that I needed to cover this story and give my expertise and my input and everything that I've learned through the years about trafficking to this story. So there's that. And then number two, I quickly learned in covering not just Britney's story, but covering the actual Free Britney movement that her fans and you and people like you, the advocates of this movement, were actually the ones that were doing the job the media should have done 
for Britney Spears. And that enraged me, the way that the media has treated you guys, the way that the media has treated Britney, the way that the media has been in bed with Jamie Spears, Lou Taylor, and Team Khan, the way that they have gaslit Britney, mocked her, gaslit you guys, mocked you guys, called you names, called you maniacs, called you crazy. Britney Spears' father, Jamie, speaking out against the viral campaign, hashtag Free Britney, calling it a joke and a conspiracy. That made me sick because we would not know what was really going on with Britney Spears and the truth about her situation if it wasn't for you guys. So I felt like not only did I need to give Britney Spears and her story a voice, I felt I needed to give you guys a voice because I have seen how you guys have been treated and I have seen how the media has treated you and it's sickening and it's wrong and it's not fair. Okay. Nothing further, your honor. I, I agree with you completely. It's very validating as a member of the movement, especially someone who's been targeted so directly mm -hmm. to hear someone who used to work in mainstream media, who does have journalism credentials, who is a journalist, um, kind of validate those things because that is certainly how I have felt throughout the movement. I have felt as, th as though we were being gaslit by the media and instead of them investigating what we were actually saying, they just like kept trying to spin this team con narrative and like mm -hmm. get us to agree with them on camera that they weren't on Jamie Spears' payroll. Yeah. Liz, it never crossed my mind that she could be on Jamie's payroll. That never even crossed mm -hmm. my mind at the time. And I know like a lot of people who watch this might be like, you're naive, we've been knowing. Okay, listen. Y'all been knowing I didn't. It didn't even cross my mind. But then when I'm on the interview, she's like, yeah, can we all agree? Not on Jamie's really like, yeah. What in the what on earth was that? And so yeah, I she do- She said it a lot, didn't she? It was very strange that she kept repeating herself on that. And at the time I had never even heard of the idea that a journalist could be on someone's payroll. Like it was such mm -hmm. a weird, I mean, a lot happens in a few months. I definitely learned that that is something that can happen in, since that interview, you know, in May. But yeah, I mean, that was just one example of us attempting, you know, trying with all of our might to relay some of these issues to mainstream media and some of it get some of it makes it on air you guys raised so much hell and your voices got so loud that it got to the point where they had to start talking about certain topics surrounding britney's corrupt conservatorship to appease you guys you know for a very long time you never heard lou taylor's name and we know that she's been involved since before she was even placed on a 5150, before she was even put in a conservatorship, why haven't we heard her name? You know, she has her hands everywhere, but it got to the point that you guys caused such a stir in a good way that they had no choice but to start mentioning her name. Did they go deep on her? No, but they had no choice but to start talking about her only because of you guys, which is really sad because if they had done their job, they would have been looking into her years ago and Brittany would probably be free by now. Not only is it wrong what they did, you could argue that they are accomplices against Britney Spears, especially if we find out down the road that some of these people were on their payroll. I mean, would you be surprised to find that out? No, and I can tell you as a journalist who worked for multiple publications over the time span of two decades that I know journalists that got paid off. In terms of the entertainment business, that was very common. And if it wasn't exchanging cash, it was exchanging favors, products. I mean, in terms of working for the tabloids, working for magazines such as In Touch Weekly, Us Weekly and stuff. And there were a lot of reporters that took money on the side or took trips or got concert tickets or whatever in exchange for putting out a, a story or pushing a narrative. And I'm, and I'm not saying that the people at the top necessarily knew about this and or endorsed it, but there also were some cases where the people at the top were the ones that were doing it. So I've seen it. So I know it's possible because I worked with people that were actually getting paid off. I know for a lot of people, this is something, you know, they or y'all have been knowing for so many years, but I mean, for so many of us, myself included, had you told me this a couple years ago, I would have probably not fully been able to like believe that. It just, you don't want to believe. Right. You don't want to believe that you've been being literally, literally lied to by the, the one source that's supposed to be reputable, you know, the news, the mainstream media, I was taught, 
is the most rubbing in your little eighth grader writing your paper. It's like, oh, yeah. you can't cite Wikipedia. You got to cite only reputable news sources. And it's like, what was that ever real? Or, you know, I feel like so betrayed. Well, it's believing that, you know, it's, it's gotten worse over the years to explain in a very simplistic way. The mainstream media has been consolidated under an umbrella of five different companies. A few decades ago, back in the 90s and in, in the 80s, you had TV stations, local TV stations and small town newspapers all the way up to large newspapers like the New York Times and whatnot under the umbrella of over a hundred or maybe hundreds of companies. Now they're all consolidated under the umbrella of five corporations. So they technically all have the same puppet masters controlling them. So there's still good people in journalism and there's still good reporters out there. I know some, but they don't get to decide what's reported. They don't write the headlines. And I know from my experience that there were certain stories that I was told I was not allowed to cover under any circumstance, no matter how big of a story it was or how important it, it was, I was not allowed to cover certain stories because it didn't fit the narrative, the agenda that these corporations wanted to push. That's when I decided to leave the mainstream media because I did not become a journalist to become someone's puppet. I became a journalist to expose the truth wherever that led me. I did not become a journalist to push a narrative, to deceive people, to put out propaganda, to lie, to gaslight, to manipulate. And when my bosses were trying to get me to do that, that's when I walked away from making a lot of money and had no choice but to go independent if I wanted to continue to do the honest journalism. I gotta tell you, that sounds very familiar. Yes. Liz, that story uh, you just told. That was actually leads into the very next question I was gonna ask you, which is, do you have any personal experience? Like I just had this video air where Lou Taylor, through her company TriStar, approached my law firm that I was working at as my mm -hmm. first lawyer job ever. As you know, it's in the documentary as well. And she, she tried to silence me using her money, resources, power, and, and the way she tried to do that was through my employer. So you had just mentioned some of your bosses, you know, mm -hmm. telling you you could and couldn't report certain things. How did that experience go for you? And and obviously we know the conclusion was you left. Mm -hmm. but I did a lot of stories in 2016 for a major publication and they did amazing. They went viral collectively. They got millions and millions of hits and many of them were highlighted on the front page of the judge report. There was one story in particular that did very well well, and it exposed some major corruption with a very powerful person and powerful people shared my story. And shortly after that, I started having problems in my life. And one of the most traumatizing thing that happened after the story went huge and went viral was my dog got poisoned and almost died. And actually the same thing just happened to Rose McGowan's dog. And the way that she describes what happened with her dog is actually almost the exact scenario. And what happened with my dog. And Rose McGowan has been exposing a lot of corruption in Hollywood for many years. She was a victim of Harvey Weinstein and she's been exposing people on both sides of the fences in terms of politics. So when you go too deep, and expose too much corruption, bad things start happening to you. And you get threatened, you get harassed, stalked physically. I've been physically assaulted. Like I said, my, my dog's been poisoned. I've had to move multiple times for safety reasons. I had to leave the country at one point. This stuff is very real. And when people expose too much corruption, this is par for the course. And anyone that has been a whistleblower understands this. Back in 2016, when the story went viral and I dealt with the situation with my dog, that was the first major thing that happened that was very disturbing to me. And at that point, my editor who put out that story, that's when he kind of started telling me that I shouldn't cover certain stories. And mind you, there was never an issue with my reporting. I never got one legal letter in my entire career. I never had an issue retraction. There was never a discrepancy in my reporting. Problem was that I was exposing too much with people that were too powerful. So after that story came out, my boss started living limiting what I could cover. I will say that the company got a new owner at the time, so that could have 
played into that. It was that one story that kind of changed everything. And then there were a couple other publications that I was freelancing for, and I was doing a lot of stories exposing sex trafficking and did a few stories on sex trafficking. I think after my second or third story that did very well, went viral. I was basically let go with no explanation. Then the same thing happened with another publication I was working for, and it was the same thing. And for this publication, I was actually covering the murder of Seth Rich who was a worker for the DNC and also a whistleblower. And I did some stories on him that went viral. And again, no problem with my story, no legal letters, like no retractions, everything in my reporting was accurate. The stories I did went viral. And the next thing I know, I want an editor called me up and said, hey, sorry, we have to let you go. We're not allowed to tell you why and never contact us again. That's insane. Mm -hmm. It's validating to hear that this is a playbook. This is what these bullies do. This is what people who don't want to be exposed or found out do. And so it is very unfortunate that that happened. But mm -hmm. it sounds to me like you had kind of realized like you weren't going to be able to completely tell the full truth and follow the truth wherever that may lead you, like you said earlier, while still kind of being beholden to like these mainstream media type of entities. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah. Yes. I could put out some stories that were honest, but they were not exposing the kind of corruption that I felt led to expose, especially in terms of the sex trafficking, because I'm very passionate for victims of sex crimes. And so I really wanted to expose predators and being told that I wasn't allowed to do that. That was a big problem for me. So I could have stayed working in the mainstream media and put out more fluffy type, you know, articles, but that's not what I'm good at. And that's not what I wanted to do. I'm good at investigative journalism. And so I left. Yeah, that sounds really familiar. I mean, I could still be in big law and kind of like doing this integrity up for a bid to the higher highest corporate bidder act. But I like you said, it just that resonates with me so much because it's not what I want to do. It's not what I'm good at. And it also didn't allow me to be true to myself and to my own truth. You know what I mean? It, it exactly. didn't allow me to, to, to follow, to investigate, like what I'm doing on the clock should not have to do with what I'm doing in my spare time. And now you're able to make documentaries and report on more stories and through documentaries than you have been able to previously while you were in the mainstream media, perhaps. So mm -hmm. for this upcoming documentary, what can, can viewers in particular, you know, my audience expect to see when they watch this can you give us any teasers any spoilers yeah. well my hope is is that we cover all the topics that the people in free britney have been begging journalists to cover for years i've been following the group very very closely every day all day long and i've been reading all the social media comments and tweets and whatnot and a lot of people have been crying out begging for a journalist to expose Lou Taylor. So I did. <laughs> the main focus of the first half of the documentary is on her and her involvement with Britney's conservatorship that uh, I believe is. What was compelling to you? whenever you started looking into Lou Taylor after, you know, you heard our cries and pleas yeah. for reporting on the issue. What what did you notice about her and what kind of did you find? Uh, I think the most interesting part about Lou is that she has managed to stay under the radar for so long, for so many years. And to me, what that tells me from my experience, that goes to show you she's a very, a very powerful woman and she has very powerful connections to other very powerful people. Because the fact that she's been able to slide under the radar for so many years and that the media has barely scratched the surface in terms of the corruption that she's involved in, not just with Britney Spears' conservatorship, but with other people and other estates, which by the way, we get into that too in this documentary. It doesn't just cover Britney and her story. It does cover some other celebrities who have been victimized and preyed on by predators like Lou Taylor. I am very heartened to hear that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, the, the, I, I, I wasn't 
totally surprised, but I was surprised at how she has been able to stay under the radar and silence people or attempt to silence people that didn't work with you and intimidate people and, and the tactics that she used, you know, and, and she was very strategic in the way that she used her intimidation tactics. I noticed it seemed that she didn't go after the mainstream media too hard, but she did go after fans hard some fans and she went after some fans that are younger and maybe didn't have the money to fight a lawsuit or they maybe just didn't have the understanding that her legal threats were totally unfounded and would not win in a civil trial with any judge that's remotely fair so i just picked up on the fact that she seems to have been protected for many years and that she's used a lot of different tactics and Bernie's money to stay off the radar and to control the narrative and to harass, threaten, and intimidate fans and people like you that are advocating for Britney's freedom. And it's pretty horrifying. And it's about time that she gets exposed. And not only exposed, there should be a criminal investigation into her and she should face justice for any crime that she may have committed in regards to Britney and his, her situation and possibly situations with other celebrities as well. I've looked into a few different connections of Luz and it's quite frankly terrifying. I mean, I don't know if you're gonna cover who you're covering in the documentary, like I haven't seen it yet. I know that there's like people out there that can do this type of thing, but it does still kind of baffle me. We're talking about Britney Spears. It's Britney, bitch. We're talking about people who, who the entire world knows on a first name basis. Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Britney Spears. You know, Prince, Kylie, Britney. It's like, it is mind blowing to me. Like mm -hmm. you said, how has she been able? She just hasn't been discovered yet. And I, ooh, ooh, I hope, I am hoping that between my video that just came out and your documentary that we are able to light a fire under a couple other yeah. people who perhaps have been victimized or treated poorly by her. And I want people to come out. I want two things. One, I want people to know what's going on in corporate America. Mm -hmm. When I came into this movement, there was almost no lawyers, no doctors. And it's kind of like a lot of people were saying, look, there's courts involved. There's judges, there's lawyers, there's doctors, her family's involved. Mm -hmm. So we were really gaslit. Like, you know, there's all these people involved. You little people don't know anything. And then I came in and I was like, no, I'm a lawyer. This looks bad to me. And we were all kind of sort of gaslit in the beginning part of the movement. And now it's kind of like people were asking if, the, if this is so bad, why hasn't anyone spoken out? Why hasn't anyone said anything? Why haven't any lawyers, judges, doctors, family? If it's so bad, why hasn't anyone spoken out? Mm -hmm. This is why I just mm -hmm. hope that people are empowered and and sort of validated that maybe their run in with her was wasn't it was what they thought. You know what I mean? Maybe mm -hmm. people will be empowered and I'm just I'm really hoping that. But in any event Well, just look at what happened to John Erdley. He is probably the only lawyer that truly was trying to help Brittany and inform her in terms of the criminality that was going on behind this conservatorship and trying to get her free of it. And, and he they, lost his bar license. They destroyed his life. They destroyed his life. They ransacked his office. His assistant died in a death that I find highly suspect. These are the kinds of things that these powerful <laughs> do to people that are trying to expose truth to whistleblowers, to people that are trying to expose big, powerful people. These kinds of things, unfortunately, are normal. But the good news is, is that if enough people like us stand up and shine a light on topics like this and corruption like this, then we can defeat them, we can expose them, we can demand justice, we can take these people down. We all rise up against these people, then we can get justice. But it can't just be one person, it has to be a lot of people. And that's why the Free Britney movement is so amazing and it's so powerful because there's so many people involved and there's so many people that have been screaming at the top of their lungs for a very long time about the injustice that's happening to Britney Spears and the Free Britney movement is actually a perfect example of how much power we the people have. We need to be reminded of that because we forget that is right. and these gatekeepers that are controlling us and and people like Britney Spears, they want us divided. 
they want us in fighting because when that's happening, we're not exposing them. Yeah, no, I mean, I it's so obvious to me whenever there are bad actors coming into the movement to try and just cause chaos and rile us up. And listen, some of these people are just chaotic. Like they just want to cause chaos wherever and doing whatever. But I've made all kinds of friends. I've made all kinds of relationships and connections with people that I probably otherwise wouldn't have. And it has made me realize our power. It is so easy to control us whenever we are divided, but whenever we, exactly. people like you and me, and that was going to be my next question, you know, but when people like you and me who do come from totally, some ways we come from very similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I don't want to minimize, like mm -hmm. we come from similar places, but we also have different ideas about politics and mm -hmm. whatever, you know, pres who should be the president and things like that. But we both see this corruption and the corruption is also bipartisan. Mm -hmm. So why can't the solution be? When we first, you know, became acquainted, you and I, um, we talked about the Lou Taylor story and how she had come to my work and you had offered to help me to tell that story, mm -hmm. and, which I really appreciate. Why it is you would wanna help someone who doesn't, you know, agree with you politically, or perhaps, I don't know, we haven't talked about politics that much. What was it that made you wanna help me to tell my story despite that? Well, number one, I, I see myself in you. The journey that you've been going down, exposing this corruption is very similar to, to my journey. When I started really focusing on exposing elite pedophile rings, initially I, I didn't believe it. I couldn't believe that some of these people are big celebrities and big names and, and big powerful politicians that we know. And, you know, I couldn't believe that this stuff was real. And so I said to myself, all right, I'm going to put on my journalist cap and look into this and prove that it's not real. And all I learned is that, oh no, not only is it real, it's way worse than I ever could have imagined in my worst nightmare. And so I kind of have seen you go down a similar journey because I know that you got into this movement because you were going to prove that these quote unquote conspiracy theories on TikTok about Britney were just that and it actually led you to the truth. So my journey was very similar. And so when I found you, I could relate to you, I could see myself in you. And um, I also found that you were exposing information and connecting dots that I didn't see anyone else in the movement doing. And I was really impressed by your work. And I also saw, like I talked earlier about how you and, and others in the movement were treated by the media and it, it's been horrible and it made me sick. And so I wanted to tell your side of the story because you stand for truth and that's what I stand for. And yeah, we may have some political differences and different political ideologies, but who cares? I remember as a teenager, I could hang out with my friends that had political differences than I did. And it was, would have good, informative, intelligent debate. And now it's like the media is pu pushing this divide. They want us all to be hating on each other and, and at each other's throats to the, to the point where we can't even sit down and have a rational conversation with people that have different viewpoints and it's it's so sad and i hope that this documentary and the free britney movement helps to bridge some of that divide because i think everyone regardless of what party you affiliate with or what your politics are your religion whatever regardless of all of that i think that we can all unite against whether it's Britney Spears or someone else being trafficked and stripped of all their constitutional rights. I think that we can all join hands and get together and stand in unison on this issue. And there's no reason why we shouldn't. So I do hope that this documentary helps to bring people together because this is a human rights issue and it's bipartisan and it's not political. And I also want people to understand that a, a lot of the, the fighting and, and, and the bickering about politics and whatever, that's all driven and fueled by the media, the same corrupt media that has lied to you about Britney Spears, that has lied about you guys, that has lied about the movement, that has called the movement a quote unquote conspiracy theory. They want us divided because if we are divided and fighting amongst ourselves, we're not spending our time exposing people like Lou Taylor. We cannot fall into that trap. They see that Britney doesn't need to be in this conservatorship. Yeah. 
and that she's being violated. I'm kind of on a like self-discovery journey myself, like at yeah. the time. So my opinions on these things are constantly evolving, but I am actually optimistic that more people can come together and say, listen, we may not agree on 98 things, but let's get together on these two things. Cause we can all agree that we don't want to be, exactly. we can all agree that the people that we're paying to not lie to us should not be lying to. That's a, that is bipartisan. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so I really do. I mean, I really do appreciate that you are are the only journalist that I have spoken to who is willing to tell this story, at least right now. I mean, I've talked to a couple other ones. I'm willing to talk to all y'all about this story, but right now I want to just thank you for being the one who has enough courage and bravery to step out and say, you know what? I don't care what anybody else is thinking or saying, I'm seeing the truth and I'm going to tell it. And yeah. that's just like me. So obviously I'm going to like that, but thank you. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you think that we missed here that you really want people to know about the documentary? Oh, also I want you to let everyone know when and where sure. they view the uh, slave pr princess slave slave princess, right? Slave princess, yeah. Sorry, I'll, I'll edit it to okay. say the right way. <laughs> let the people know where and when they can actually see slave princess. Yeah, it's gonna be on slaveprincess.com, I think you said. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, anything else that you think we need to really discuss too um, during this time that yeah. you'd like people to know or think about? Yeah, and I want people to understand that. This documentary is not just about Britney. We cover a lot of different topics in this documentary and we cover other celebrities who have been victims of similar situations that Britney has been a victim of. So I want people to understand that the situation with Britney Spears is not uncommon in Hollywood. And I'm not talking specifically about the conservatorship. I'm talking about the way that she is controlled, manipulated, and abused. This is very common in Hollywood. Physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, and trafficking is the norm in Hollywood. So I want people to understand there are many celebrities in Hollywood that are victims of abuse and that are being controlled and God forbid that they they say something that doesn't fit a certain narrative you know it's the end of the world from their handlers so I want people to understand there's many many victims of people like Lou Taylor in Hollywood and I also want people to understand how big the corruption goes and how deep it goes because there were many, many bad actors that played a role and a hand in this to make this enslavement of hers that lasted 13 years happen. And the people involved with her trafficking for 13 years, some of them are lower level people, okay? You were talking about maybe lower level lawyers and court clerks and stuff like that. Law enforcement and the corruption and the ties to Britney's corrupt conservatorship goes all the way up to Washington, DC. There are a lot of people that were involved in this and there are a lot of people that were in very powerful positions that were involved in this and that they were either directly involved or they knew about it and they were totally complicit and took advantage of the situation. So I just hope that people understand how deep this goes and it's much bigger than most people realize. It's a very deep rabbit hole and that there are a lot of people that are victims of very similar circumstances that Britney's been a victim of, whether they're in a conservatorship or not. So I hope people kind of walk away understanding the bigger picture. And then the other thing I, I want people to think about is the mainstream media has lied about what was really happening with Britney Spears for years and years and years. And not only have they lied about the truth about Britney Spears, they lied about you guys. They lied about the movement. You guys were gaslit, you guys were slandered by them, and you guys were all called crazy and you were called conspiracy theorists. Yep. So you know, and so I want people to think a little bigger here and contemplate if the media is lying about Britney and free Britney, what else are they lying about? I mean, it's a question that I've been asking myself since probably July. It's not like, oh, you know, it's misleading or, it's a little bit of a reach or it's which is just lies. Not every single article has a lie in it, but like Chloe Maylos, right? Like CNN, like who actually just 
literally just lie. But let me point out to you a few things about Jamie Spears, her dad. He has not only been the conservator for over a decade, he has taken her from being in debt to owing millions of dollars. I know. There are journalists that have won Pulitzer Prizes off of journalism that was a flat out lie. I mean, that's how backwards the world has become. Yeah, you get rewarded for not having integrity. I feel relieved and very happy and thankful and grateful that you are taking a stab at this story. I mean, I know you did a lot of work with your team and I am very appreciative of all of your research and your questions. And I really, really looking forward to screening the documentary. Did you say like the day it's gonna be released yet or? Yeah, as of now, we plan on releasing it on November 3rd. Uh, uh, all goes well, November 3rd is the big day. After it airs, I can re-update this video too and just put the link below yeah. too for that. Oh, that's a good idea. People. Yeah. So people will be able to view it on slaveprincess.com and then we're gonna upload it to different social media platforms. So people will be able to watch it on slaveprincess.com. We worked very hard on it, night and day, many long days and long nights. I can't tell you how many all-nighters I pulled. I dedicated my whole summer to this and I worked with someone who served as the director and did a lot of the video editing and the writing as well. And his name's Jules Vincent and his work is just, amazing it's it's brilliant and um, it was an honor to work with him and i think that people are going to be really impressed to see the journalism in it but just the quality of the documentary how well it was put together and just how well done it was i just i hope everyone's really going to like it britney spears herself free britney movement who we give all the credit to for exposing the truth about what was going on with her. I hope that we did you guys good. That's that's my hope and I hope it opens many new eyes to what's been going on with Britney Spears and all the injustice that she's faced. I hope so too. Okay, well, I have to run and get ready for another appointment that I have in 15 minutes. Oh my God, this was so good. This was so good. I love you. I'm so proud I of you. Know, I love you too. Okay, Hang well, in there, girl. You. You're doing awesome. Thank you. All will be well. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. This was so fun. Be well. You too, girl. Bye.